Hello and welcome to last aid USMLE's high yield question QID 0024. Alright, so here's the question. Um, I want you to pause the video and go over the question once before we go ahead. The correct answer to the question is C. Bite by a redivid bug. Alright, so let's go over the question one step at a time and arrive at the correct answer. This is a two step question. The first step involves the diagnosis and the second step involves the vector. So the first step, uh, the main clue for this entire question is the image. The image which was shown in the previous section was of a typical masty goat. Uh, apart from that, the other clues include the medical student went to Bogota. Bogota, you may not have heard about the city, but it is a South American city. The symptoms she has uh, are all highlighted, inability to swallow, exercise intolerance and bilateral rails. The inability to swallow uh, means that the person has a mega esophagus, uh, which could be because of secondary achalasia, because of the trypanosoma cruzi. And the exercise intolerance and bilateral rails is because of dilated cardiomyopathy. The first step so from all these clues is to derive the diagnosis. The diagnosis being Chagas disease. The second step actually helps us get to the correct answer after we get the diagnosis. The question asks us to name the vector. Now we already know what the diagnosis is. The diagnosis is Chagas disease. So the vector out of the given options is Redivid bug. Redivid bug which is a type of triatoma is the vector for Chagas disease Trypanosoma cruzi. Alright friends, so in this slide, we are going to be reviewing the entire Chagas disease. Most books don't really give this in a proper, organized, step-by-step -step fashion. So that's what we've done here. The first point is the organism responsible. Now the way I remember it is there are two trypanosomas, right? There's trypanosoma cruzi and trypanosoma brucei. Now trypanosoma cruzi starts with a C and Chagas disease also starts with a C. So I remember Chagas disease, Trypanosoma cruzi and the other Trypanosoma causes the other disease. Which disease is that? Trypanosoma brucei causes sleeping sickness. All right. So that's the first point. The second point is a redivid bug uh, is the vector which was also the answer of the current question. The redivid bug is also known as a triadoma. So in your exam, they could put that as an option instead of the redivid bug. They could say that bite from a triadoma. And it is also known as a kissing bug. Now it's interesting um, why it is called a kissing bug. I mean, why would you name a bug kissing bug? The reason is uh, it helps you remember that it causes a painless bite. The Trypanosoma, which is transmitted via a painful bite, is Trypanosoma brucei. The Setse fly, which is responsible for Trypanosoma brucei, B for brucei, has a painful bite, whereas the Trypanosoma cruzi, cruzi for C, which is transmitted by the redivid bug, is transmitted by a painless bite. Right? So, painful bite painless bite. Remember the differences. It's important for your exam. The mode of transmission. Now, um, you normally assume that just like mosquitoes do or just like ticks do, uh, the organism would be transmitted via the insect directly into the bloodstream. But that's not actually how it happens for the radiovid bug. And this is extremely high yield for your exam. If you don't know this, write it down somewhere or copy this slide into your book. The mode of transmission is that first the redivid bug which is the kissing bug causes painless bite and it defecates nearby so I, I like to think about it is that it bites you has a meal and uh, after the meal it kind of digests the blood it just took in so it has to poop nearby so it defecates nearby uh, and then the patient scratches the feces and the organism is not actually transmitted via the bite but it is in the feces and the uh, insect feces uh, 
which is extremely like microscopic nobody can really see it like you you can't really see it on your skin but the feces contains the tripomastic wood which is the uh, causative form there are two forms tripomastic wood and amastic wood so tripomastic wood is the form which is transmitted to humans and this enters the blood stream and we can see it on a uh, blood smear just like we show so uh, in this um, question the other form is the amastigote form that is the tissue form the amastigote form is the tissue form the tripomastigote form is the blood form right so the way i like to remember it is if you uh, saw the image you must have seen that it had a flagella on it right the tripomastigote had a flagella to it so where do you think is it going to need a flagella the flagella is for motion right so where is it going to need a flagella within a solid hard organ or within the blood so it's going to need the flagella in the blood because that's where it can move in the tissue it's not really moving it's reproducing by binary fission in the tissue so at that stage it's just in an amastigote form don't get bogged down by tribomastigote and amastigote in the coming slides after this in just one minute you're going to be shown exactly how a tribomastigote looks and an amastigote looks as of now just remember tribomastigote is uh, seen in the blood and a mastigote is seen in the tissue right so after this the symptoms the symptoms uh, let's uh, start out the symptoms step by step so first you get bitten by a redivit bug so at the place where you are bitten you don't really feel any pain but after a few days because you had a bite you have a small inflammatory nodule at the bite side and that inflammatory nodule is called chagoma which is pretty easy to remember chagas disease chagoma right so uh, that's the first thing the second thing is the romano sign you're going to be shown an image of a romano sign in the coming slides and it is extremely high yield for your exam so as of now just remember that romano sign is unilateral swelling of the eyelid how does this happen so um, for example you get bitten by the radioid bug and the fecal matter is nearby you can't really see that there's any fecal matter there but you bite uh, you you scratch the area where you have been bitten then you take that same hand and wipe off your eye so that's actually how the uh, tripomastic goats get transmitted from the bite side to your eyelid so that's important to know so you get bitten and you wipe your eye off and you have unilateral swelling of one eyelid which is known as the Romano's sign remember this Romano's sign uh, now there are three uh, specific pathologies these two first two are just because of the bite or the tripomastigote itself but there are three specific pathologies which I want you to remember the first one is megacolon the second one is mega esophagus also called acquired secondary achalasia and the third one is dilated cardiomyopathy the way I like to remember it is Chagas disease just likes to blow everything up right so it likes to dilate everything so the three dilations are dilation of the esophagus dilation of the colon and dilation of the heart right simple to remember all right and the treatment is extremely high yield because um, neither is the mechanism of action of the treatment asked neither is the adverse effect asked but what is asked is the name of the drugs and these two drugs bends Nidazole and Nifutimox. Benzidazole and Nifutimox. Benzidazole and Nifutimox are used only for Chagas disease. They are not used at any other place. They are used only and only for Chagas disease. So remember those two names. They are extremely high yield. The way a question could be, they could form the exact same question and instead they could just change the last line. The last line instead of saying what is the positive or what is the vector for this disease, they, they could ask what is the treatment of choice for this disease and they could put either one of the two benzodiazole or nifurtimox in the options so remember those two names right so as i mentioned in the previous slide of the review of chagas disease these are the images which are important for Chagas disease. Uh, in microbiology, it's all about image, 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 and image. You are going to be asked image based questions. There are going to be tons of questions on images, and I highly recommend you 
remember each of these image because they are extremely testable so let's uh, go over the images one by one the first image is what you saw in the question I'm not going to go over this again it is tripomastigoid in blood sphere you can see the flagella right the, there's a, a line which is curved on each one of these four uh, trypanosoma cruzis so th this is, is the flagellated form and what did i say flagellated form is to move around in the blood so this is the flagellated form tripomastigoid now this is the non-flagellated form a mastigoid can you see there are small nodules around uh, this is a mastigoid form of trypanosoma cruzi within the tissue it doesn't need to move around in the tissue all it does in the tissue is undergo binary fission so uh, this is the second form of trypanosoma cruzi in humans all right so here's the question uh, i want you to pause the video and go over the question once before we go ahead. This is the Romanosine uh, unilateral periorbital swelling and what did I say how do you get Romanosine? You get it by scratching your skin where you were bitten and then uh, putting the same finger into your eye. The finger had been contaminated by the uh, tripomastigotes and then you put it in your eye so you have a periorbital swelling. Uh, so now that those were the images of the correct options now we're going to go through the incorrect options the first incorrect option is giardiasis giardiasis uh, has a typical image this is also extremely high look at the image there are two kind of eyes on each side that's how i like to look at it and there are a ton of flagella there are six flagella which are clearly visible on this image so remember this image it causes um, fatty malabsorptive diarrhea in people who go trekking and camping and drink uh, stream water so that's the classic uh, vignette which could be asked going out on a camp and then drinking river water and the river water is contaminated with giardias so you, so you have fat fatty uh, malabsorptive kind of diarrhea the second option is trichomonas. Trichomonas vaginalis is a sexually transmitted disease. Now you can also see this is also flagellated. So uh, the difference between this one and giardiasis and leishmaniasis is very important. You may be given all three of these uh, images in your exam. So remember that this one doesn't really have the two eyes like giardiasis. It's also kind of a bit fat so it's not really like GR disease in uh, the coming slide we're going to be uh, comparing and contrasting the flagellated uh, organisms which could be asked so this is trichomonasis which is a sexually transmitted disease now this is the non-flagellated form a mastigoid can you see there are small nodules around uh, this is a mastigoid form of trypanosoma cruzy within the tissue it doesn't need to move around in the tissue all it does in the tissue is undergo binary fission so uh, this is the second form of trypanosoma cruzy in humans Now going on to the 
next option option d aedes mosquito bite uh, the aedes mosquito as you can see uh, has kind of white stripes on it uh, all over it this is a uh, different kind of mosquito as compared to the anopheles mosquito or any other mosquito uh, the white stripes is what uh, separates this from the rest and that's why it 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 is like the stripes on a tiger's fur coat so people like to call it the tiger mosquito so that's how you can remember it if you have an image with white colored stripes on a mosquito that's the Aedes mosquito this is an extremely important uh, vector and it transmits dengue chikungunya and yellow fever all of which are extremely high yield uh, diseases on your test Alright, so coming to option E, option E is the derma centaur tick. Now you can clearly differentiate this from the radio bug, right? It looks completely different and you could have this image on your exam also. The derma centaur tick transmits three very, very crucial um, diseases. The All three are tick-borne diseases or vector-borne diseases. Uh, the diseases are Francisella tularensis, Rickettsia rickettsi and Colorado tick fever. So remember all these three. Francisella tularensis, Rickettsia rickettsi, and Colorado tick fever are transmitted by the derma centaur tick. There are other forms of ticks also which we are not discussing here, which is the exodus tick. Uh, so don't confuse this with that. The derma centaur tick has these three. Alright, so the last option uh, options are option A, F, and G, uh, the dog bite or the cat scratch. Neither of these transmit the Trypanosoma cruzi, which was, uh, if you remember, the original question which was asked. The most common disease transmitted by dogs and cats counterintuitively is not rabies. In the United States, dogs and cats are not the most common cause of rabies. Actually, most of them are pets and have been vaccinated, so they don't really get rabies. The most common disease they do transmit, which is actually extremely high yield, is Pasteurella multocida. Remember this, Pasteurella multocida. You have a cat bite, dog bite, it causes Pasteurella multocida. So um, that is about the bites of these two organisms, but um, there's also a disease called cat scratch fever, which is because of a microorganism known as Bartonella henselii. Bartonella henselii causes cat scratch disease in normal people, in, in people who do not have any secondary immunodeficiency. But in AIDS patients, Bartonella henselii can cause a very severe disease known as bacillary angiomatosis. Remember that also bacillary angiomatosis is also an important uh, disease which can be asked. Alright, so if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. Thank you and hope you have a great day.